Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I am so excited to see so many people here. This is fantastic. My name is Sarah McFarlane, and I am the program director for adult education here at Sauk Valley Community College. And on behalf of our faculty and our staff in adult education, as well as the administration of Sauk Valley Community College, I welcome you to our 2023 graduation and awards event for our adult education students. We will be honoring all of our student achievers this year. So we have three programs under adult education um, that we will be recognizing students uh, who are part of Project Vital, which is our volunteer tutoring program. We have students who are a part of our English as a Second Language program, and we have students who are a part of our GED program who are working to complete their Illinois High School Diploma. So we will be hearing from students from all of those programs tonight, and we will be recognizing all of their hard work and their dedication this year. So our program, the Adult Education Program, has been providing services in our area for over 30 years which is pretty incredible. Um, I wanted to take a few moments to recognize some very special people um, who have done quite a bit to uh, make an impact on our program and especially um, to provide help to the students that we've served over these many years. The first person I want to recognize is Martha Anderson. And I'm scanning the crowd. Do we see Martha? I don't see her, but that's okay. I'm still going to talk about her. <laughs> so Martha began working in our program in 2014. Um, so those of us that have been around for a while, we know Martha and we know her name. Um, she began in 2014 as an instructor in adult education. In 2015, she became uh, the program's director. And what was very significant um, in 2015 uh, and 2016 that made Martha just an invaluable leader was that we did not receive any funding from the state during those two years. Um, and if you are not aware, um, our programs, all of our programs, are free. So our students do not pay any money um, to take our classes. Um, and that is because we receive funding from the state and from the federal government to provide these classes as a service. So in the years of 2015 and 2016, it was a little uh, scary, a little concerning. We did not have the funding. Um, and under Martha's direction, um, she was able to work with our administrators, especially Dr. Helmick. And um, we were able well, Martha made it happen that we were able to continue offering adult education classes. And I will tell you, there were a lot of programs in the state. Um, we are one of many programs. There were many programs in the state that closed their doors during those years because they did not have the funding to be able to keep the classes open. But with Martha's leadership, uh, we kept our doors open and we continued to serve students and helped them to reach their educational goals. So Martha did a fantastic job. Um, she left her position in 2017 and that's when I took over shortly thereafter. Um, so we're all grateful for the legacy she left us and all the hard work that she did for our program. Um, the next um, folks that, uh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, the next two ladies I want to recognize, they also are not here, but again, I'm still going to talk about them. Um, I want to recognize Beth Hubbard and Kathy Jacoby. And those ladies are special to us because they're part of what I would call our sister program um, with the Regional Office of Education that uh, Mr. Tennyson represents as the regional superintendent. Um, Beth Hubbard has served as the coordinator of the Education Outreach Program for 20 years. And Kathy Jacoby has served as the GED instructor for this program for 18 years. So these two ladies um, offered 
just as we do, free GED preparation classes, and they specifically serve youth. So they work with students who are 17 to 24 years, um, years of age. And the focus of their program is most definitely for these students to complete their high school um, diploma, Illinois high school diploma, but it's also um, a focus to get these students into the workforce. Um, Kathy and Beth achieved a phenomenal milestone just a few short weeks ago. Um, they had their 500th GED graduate. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that is, it's incredible. So what a legacy Beth and Kathy are leaving. I don't envy you, Chris, because <laughs> those are some big shoes that some folks are going to have to fill. Um, but I, I learned a lot from them when I started my position here, and they will definitely be missed. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal ladies. The, the last person I would like to recognize is not in the room, but she's close by. <laughs> I would like to recognize a member of our staff, um, Lindsay Kelly. So for our staff, I see Carla shaking her head, yes. Our staff, we all know and love Lindsay. Students, you may not know Lindsay by her name, but you know her as the person behind the desk who is always smiling when you walk in the door, when you have a question, she is quick to answer your question and to provide you with any help that you need. And Lindsay, just a few short weeks ago, was recognized by the college as the 2023 Outstanding Staff Member, which is incredible. So yes, we need to applaud for Lindsay. Lindsay has been in adult ed, I believe, the longest. I think she outdates you, Sherry. <laughs> oh, you're, okay, okay, okay. So <laughs> Lindsay's been in adult ed for 12 years and she is the backbone of our program. Um, she keeps us straight and together and on task and makes sure we get all the reports turned into the state that we need to. I know I could not do my job without Lindsay Kelly, and I know our instructors would struggle without Lindsay's assistance. So um, Lindsay is certainly an outstanding um, employee, and we are so grateful to have her in adult education with us. So the contributions that all of these ladies have made, again, has really helped to bring our program to where it is today. And we have such a strong, successful program, as we can see with all of these folks that have come here tonight to celebrate our students. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, just going on with our program, I would like to introduce the president of our college, Dr. David Helmick. He is going to say a few words to us, and I do want to thank you, Dr. Helmick, for all of the support that you constantly give to our program. It is so appreciated. So, Dr. Helmick. Good evening. On this beautiful, beautiful evening, and this event, um, along with our commencement, which we had last uh, Friday, uh, they are the best events we have in the entire year. We are so excited to recognize uh, the accomplishments of everybody, and to recognize our, our wonderful faculty and staff. Uh, but first, to the family and friends of our graduates and the students being recognized tonight, thank you for your support. And aren't you proud? Aren't you proud? <laughs> uh, my wife and I are, daughter, are, are parents of um, three daughters, and um, whenever they had milestones like this, we were always so, so proud of them. Um, secondly, to our wonderful adult education, ESL, and Project Vital staff and faculty, our graduates and students would not be here without you. We all know that's the case. You individually represent the best of Sauk Valley Community College. Your programs, adult education, ESL, and Project Vital represent the best of Sauk Valley Community College. Thank you. I am honored to be your colleague. And, and a piggyback on what Sarah said earlier about 
uh, the two years when there was no state funding, it, it was obvious to all of us here that we needed to continue adult education. Adult education is as important of a program at the college as any other program. It is second to none. Finally, I want to recognize our graduates and students being recognized. Tonight marks the closing of a very important chapter in your life. And I like to call that chapter, give a title to that chapter, and that title is, I Did It For Me. You did not have to be here. You did not have to stick it out. You chose to give yourself the gift of education. You chose to improve yourself through education like millions and millions of others who've, um, who have gone through education, through adult, uh, adult education, ESL, and Project Vital type programs. Actor and comedian Chris Rock did. Actor and singer Cher. Singers Pink, Eminem, and 50 Cent. The former senator from Colorado, Ben Nighthorse Campbell and the former governor of Delaware, Ruth Ann Minner, are just a few examples of people who have gone through adult ed programs. And I want to mention two other people. And I had a chance to talk with some of the students a few weeks ago and tell my story. And so you know this. Uh, m many of my colleagues have heard this story many, many times. But two other people, I'm very proud to say, went through adult education programs were my parents, Richard and Phyllis Helmick in southeastern Indiana. Um, Seventy years ago, at the age of 17, they got married and finished their uh, year of high school through a 1950s equivalent of an adult education program. Why did they do that? Because then, at that time, um, high schools did not welcome back married couples, especially married couples who were expecting a child. Like you, they did not have to do that. Like you, they did not have to stick it out. Like you, they chose to give themselves the gift of adult education. Like you, they have great pride to this day in their accomplishment of adult education. Like you, they did it for themselves first. Which me leads me to our next chapter, your next chapter, which begins tomorrow. And I'm going to call that chapter, I Did It For Others. First chapter was I Did It For Me. This chapter, I did it for others. What are you going to do with your education? Those of you who are graduating through GED, um, we really hope you continue on at SOC. Uh, in a certificate program, diploma program, a degree program, and we have all kinds of support for you, and you know about that support through um, the staff and faculty of your program. And if you're not ready yet to jump into SOC, if you keep being recognized because of your improvement, at some point, your faculty and staff will make you aware that you're ready for SOC. And we will be here for you, and we will have supports for you. So what are you going to do with your education? One thing is continue it. And we hope you continue it at SOC, like so many previous adult education graduates have done. What are you going to do with that education? Well, one thing you're going to do is you will be more employable. You'll be able to get a better job better pay, and very important in profession, you'll have more control over what you can do. Secondly, and this is going to sound real, real idealistic, but what are you going to do with that education? You're going to improve the world. And I'm serious about that. You will improve the world. My parents improved the world by being the best parents possible to their 10 children. They taught us to work hard, to treat people with respect, and get a good education. For me, the two most important things in the world are family and Sauk Valley Community College. What are the two most important things in your world? And where they are, use your education to improve those. Again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Helmick. At this time, I would like to introduce Laura Moreno. Laura is our adult literacy coordinator, and Laura um, does a lot for our program. <laughs> but she is going to come up to you and speak to you about our Project Vital program. So, Laura, I invite you up. Good evening. Thank you all for being here to celebrate our students. 
So I will be talking about Project Vital, which is the Adult Literacy Program. What our program does is we offer free tutoring by recruiting volunteer tutors who we train to then pair with students who have a low reading level, uh, which is uh, ninth grade or lower. Um, so all of these students usually either they speak English as their first language but need to improve that reading level or they are learning English but need to improve their proficiency. Um, students and tutors meet one time a week or two for you know about an hour or two and then every 20 hours that they meet we post as the students to see if they have improved their reading level. So today, I would like to mention the names of the students who have already made a level gain. So I will be mentioning your, your names, and then if you could come to the front, please. So our first student is Amalia Hernandez. Yeah. Amalia increased four reading grades this year. San Juana Hernandez. San Juana increased one reading grade. Guadalupe Lemos. She increased four reading grades. <laughs> Fosia Gaffery, she increased three reading grades. Tomskov with an increase of two reading grades. <laughs> Emma Masarisi increasing three reading grades. Increasing three reading grades. <laughs> Alessia Avramenko increasing five reading grades. so much I just want to say uh, thank you so much uh, group of teachers Sakwale College this is my teacher Leslie Santos Laura Sherry I want to say thank you so much my first teacher in America this is Claudia Nelson <laughs> and I want to say thank you so much my American mom it is Don Summers she's my sponsor she gave me a ticket to my new life. Thank you. The last three, I build, or four, um, well, three, one of them, I think I didn't see them when I came here, but is Lorraine Lee here? No. She didn't come, right? Josefina Rodriguez, I know I didn't see her, and Corey Wallen. So, okay, well, congratulations, everybody.
So next, I will introduce our Project Vital Student of the Year. The student selected was Fosia Gaffery Nayib. So I would like to read her tutor's nomination. This was done by Claudia Nelson. So Claudia said, Fosia came to Illinois with a high level knowledge of English vocabulary and grammar. Her goals were to use her skills to understand the spoken language used by native speakers of English and respond intelligibly and intelligent, intelligently. Um, at first, she found it very difficult to understand even a basic conversation, but she has overcome her fear of comprehending what is spoken to her by increasing her skills in listening and processing spoken language. From feeling shy and keeping her thoughts and ideas to herself, which is a common expectation of women in her native culture, to expressing her opinions and entering into conversations with new acquaintances. She is now confident in using her English language to solve problems in any situation. She has secured a part-time job in which she needs to communicate with adults as well as children and feels at ease in her position. Fosia's biggest accomplishment in her year with the VITAL program is her feeling of confidence in listening, comprehension, and speaking. She continues to grow in her use of correct English grammar and asks questions about idioms, collocations, and expressions that she hears or reads. She is never afraid to ask about the meanings of unfamiliar words and then remembers them and uses them appropriately. Her reading level has continued to improve. Her latest score indicated a reading comprehension level of 10th grade after having started in the program with just a fifth grade level eight months prior to that. She is an eager learner alongside her responsibilities at her job and at home with her husband and two small children. She is gaining confidence in herself as a listener, speaker, reader, writer, and critical thinker in her English language. Congratulations, Fasi. And first, I want to say hello for everybody who are present here. And I want to have a special thanks from the people who are working with such as students that they need to uh, progress or improve their level of knowledge or uh, their skills of language. Thank you, thank you very much. And I want to have a thanks from my teacher and Lara and from my head of uh, circle response, Donna. Thank you very much. These, uh, these people bring a, a new chance in our life. Thank you, thank you very much. So last, but not least, I would like to honor the individuals who use their time and talents to make our community a better place, who are our volunteer tutors. Without them, it would not be possible for our program to offer the help to our students to change their lives because they want to better their life opportunities by improving their literacy level. Our tutors go above and beyond to provide invaluable support and enrichment to their students. This fiscal year, we have had 31 active tutors who have given 920 hours of their time so far. So to our tutors, thank you for your kindness to the students and our program. And that is all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. The next adult ed education program that we want to recognize is our English as a Second Language program. Students come to our ESL classes um, to improve their English skills in order to enter the workforce, get a better job, prepare for college, or complete the citizenship process. Our ESL students work incredibly hard to reach their educational goals. Many of our students have young children. Uh, many of our students work 
or have other responsibilities that make attending class very difficult. However, these students recognize the importance of improving their English and they make the time to attend class. I would like to introduce our ESL students of the year. Um, this year, we have two students that we're recognizing who attend our ESL classes. Um, our first ESL student of the year is Petra Hernandez. Unfortunately, Petty could not be here tonight. However, I do want to, um, I want to read the information that was submitted by uh, her instructor um, who nominated her, Laura, if I can find it. Here it is. So Laura Moreno, um, who you just saw, um, who is our Project Vital Coordinator, she also teaches ESL for us at night. <laughs> so uh, Laura nominated Petty, and this is what Laura had to say. This is why Laura nominated her. Petty has worked very hard in the ESL class this year. She has consistently attended the ESL classes even during very difficult life situations, she still strived to make it to class. When she has not been able to attend class, she takes home the worksheets from the day she missed and brings them completed the next day of class. Recognizing her effort and responsibility is not, only, is not the only thing to attribute to her. She is also a diligent student who applies what she learns in class as soon as possible to improve her English proficiency. With her dedication and perseverance to better herself and become more independent when dealing with daily life situations, I believe Petty is deserving of this recognition, and she most definitely is. Um, all of our students of the year are receiving um, not only a certificate, recognizing them for this honor, they are also going to be awarded a $100 credit that they can use towards classes here at the college. So um, we will make sure that Petty gets that um, award. But again, the idea of being able to continue um, their hard work and continue their education. So congratulations to Petty. Our second student of the year is Olesia, who has been up already. I would like to invite Leslie, uh, Olesia's ESL instructor, and I would like Leslie to share with you why she nominated Olesia for the honor of being ESL Student of the Year. Come on up, Olesia. <laughs> a struggle <laughs> with the mic okay I have to remove this is the thing <laughs> okay so good evening to everyone first of all allow me to introduce myself I am Leslie Santos of the ESL Dixon class together with my lovely partner Laura Moreno it is such an honor to be standing here today in front of students staff and guests and to, begin the, uh, and to be given the opportunity to introduce about this amazing student. When I first knew that she will be one of my students, I got mixed emotions. I was excited, curious, and worried. I was excited because I will have a new student, meaning state goal. <laughs> I was excited because, of course, it means fun as well. But also curious and worried because she is from Ukraine a war zone at the moment. Alicia is usually reserved and timid, but very enthusiastic whenever asked to share about her culture, her family, and her country. You can never feel the negativity of what she has been through. Being away from her family and from everything she has must be very difficult. 
even traumatizing as well. But she has chosen to move on, to continue her life and make herself adapt from a new culture, new family, and new language. Or simply, life goes on. She has shown perseverance by juggling her work schedule to being a mom and religiously attending our ESL program. Who could have tell what she's been through? Her determination to learn a new language and improve her life is truly amazing and admirable. Over the past few months, the shy Alicia has, grow to has, has grown to become confident and more driven person towards reaching her goals. She is now unstoppable. And I'm proud of her. We are proud of her. <laughs> After all, she is a fighter and a survivor. Everyone, let us welcome Alicia Abrimenko. Here's your certificate. And is this the one you want me to do, Kim? Yeah. 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 Do you want me to take a shot? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. I have to move this up, Leslie. <laughs> All right. As you have heard from um, hearing about the wonderful things that Olesia and Petty um, have done to earn the distinction of being an outstanding ESL student, um, our students come to our ESL program with a lot of different goals um, and a lot of different reasons for wanting to improve their English. We have, we're very fortunate to have excellent instructors and tutors who use a variety of methods to increase vocabulary, practice conversational English, and teach the correct mechanics and grammar of the English language. I would like to introduce our ESL instructional staff, so when I say your name, if you would just stand. Um, so I would like to introduce Sherry Dimmick. <laughs> Anna Lara. Laura Moreno, who had to leave. <laughs> Bill Gwynn. Uh, Dr. Rosanna Cordero, who is not here tonight. <laughs> Leslie Santos. And Tammy Schmidt. Thank you for your dedication and thank you for your service this year. So these ladies and gentlemen that you just saw served 92 students this year. That made my mouth drop. <laughs> that is an incredible number of ESL students. It's very exciting to see such growth in our ESL program. So thank you students for coming to class. When a student enters the adult education program, they are required to take a standardized reading test. And you just saw um, in Laura's program the students who improved their reading level. So that lets us know what level of reading they are at when they come into the program. Once a student completes 40 hours of instruction in the classroom, um, the student is asked to complete a post-reading test. Our hope is that the student is able to make a level gain in reading. And this isn't as simple as, I'm going to go from third grade to fourth grade. There are multiple grades that they need to advance through to make a level gain. So this is not an easy thing to do. And any of the students that have taken these tests can tell you they don't like to do it. <laughs> but they do it and they do a great job. As a grant funded program, we are required 
to have a certain number of students make a reading level gain each year. So students, that's why we bug you to take the reading test. <laughs> Um, we have to have a certain number of students make a gain in order for us to keep our doors open to provide a free program to you each and every year. So we thank you for doing that. So we will now recognize our ESL students who increase their reading level based on their post-test reading scores. We will also recognize students who came into the program at a high reading level. So I would like to, at this time, ask our ESL instructors to come up to the podium. Students, when your instructor calls your name, please come forward and you will receive your certificate. Good evening. Um, I'm so honored to be a part of the ESL program. It is a wonderful program, and the advancement of students is a very, very rewarding um, part of this job. So I'd like to call on students that I know are here. We have several who have gained um, levels, which makes me very proud. And the first one I'd like to honor is Maylee G. A very hard-working, wonderful student who I truly enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hafsva Beck is another student who was unable to be here. Asela Calderon is not able to be here, but a, a very hard-working student. Lorraine Lee. Rosa Olivas, and that was all for ESL. Wonderful students, wonderful program, and as I said, I'm so honored to be a part of it. It's very, very rewarding and very fulfilling. Thank you so much. Okay, Anna. Good evening, everyone. So I'm so honored to call these students up to here because I'm very, I mean, I'm so, so clear and I see them every morning in my class working very hard. So I'm so proud to call up to here. Please, um, this lady, well, all my students are so special to me and uh, this lady, uh, I would like to read what I'm given to her, what we are given to her as a program. It says that this certificate is awarded to Maria Gonzalez in recognition of achievement level gain due to 40 or more hours of instruction. Maria, she is such an example of woman. Thank you so much, Maria. <laughs> Oh. oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Well, the next student, it's another fighter woman, Amalia Hernandez. Congratulations, Amalia. You didn't expect in another one, huh? And just Maria said, the family is important. Um, her sister, Amalia's sister, she also has uh, awarded to uh, San Juan Hernandez. Congratulations, San Juana.
another brilliant student is Guadalupe Lemos. Come on here, I call her Lupita. Come on, Lupita. <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't know if Marta Jimenez is here. No, I don't think so. Okay, and the next one it's a certificate of effort and determination, adult education. This certificate is awarded to Claudia Rodriguez in recognition of attending ESL classes and working to improve reading, writing, and speaking skills. Congratulations. There she is with her three, uh, three sons. Congratulations. <laughs> um, I don't know if Maria Lemos is here. Nope. Cletis? Guillermina? No. Um, and before I leave, I would like to quote three, um, three powerful thoughts that uh, I hope would open up new doors for better opportunities for all of you. The first one is education is the passport to the future. The best way to predict your future is to create it. And the last one for me is the most powerful because I have always believed in education as a valuable tool to become a better human being. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Thank you so much and we all of you, we all of us hope to see you here next year. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, Laura had to leave, so I'm presenting hers as well, um, her students. Um, I had no idea I was going to give an, an acceptance speech. Uh, I didn't prepare anything, so <laughs> forgive me if I'm a little terse. Okay. All right, so in recognition of achieving a level gain due to 40 hours or more of instruction, um, I'd like to welcome down Monica Alvarado. Monica? Okay. I, okay. Let's see, Selena Elvira. Maria Lopez. Maria Gary, oh, yeah, Maria, I, know. I, I, I knew I see you. I saw you up there. <laughs> Beatrice Lopez. Yeah, Betty. Betty not here. Okay, Betty must not be here. Jessica Mazzarisi. Uh, where? Oh, oh, there she. Oh, okay, I thought I saw her. Thank you. 
Columba, Medina. All right. Marisa Ocampo. Coincidentally, I think it's her birthday today, too. Is that so right? Yes. Happy 19th birthday. And Li Shu Ching. Shu Chin. Okay, and I also have a uh, certificate of effort and determination, Dev Bot. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. That's it. So this certificate is awarded to Alicia Avramenko in recognition of achieving a level gain due to 40 or more hours of instruction. Alicia, congratulations. <laughs> and the next one is awarded to one busy mama, but still she's doing her best virtually with the help of Laura. She's not here, but she is very helpful to me. Without her, I don't know. <laughs> so we have Heather Bat. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. And we also have uh, Nora al Rushaidi, but I'm not sure if she's here, but um, she also um, in recognition of achieving a level gain. So I'll just keep it for her. And of course, last but not the least, the Certificate of Effort and Determination is awarded to Maria Chakun in recognition of attending ESL classes and working to improve reading, writing, and speaking skills. Maria! Congratulations, Maria. <laughs> what can you say, Maria? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Congratulations to all of our ESL students for all of your hard work this year. You should be very proud of yourselves for all of your efforts. So we're going to talk about our last program um, for the evening, which is our GED program. Our GED classes provide students with the instruction needed to improve their basic education skills and to earn the newly established Illinois High School Diploma. This is no longer referred to as a GED, which is so exciting. I was so excited. Chris told us about this last year. <laughs> it came to fruition on January 1st that um, signed into law by our governor that um, it is no longer referred to as a GED. 
So um, I think that takes away some stigma, which is incredible. So when our students earned their diplomas, it actually says Illinois High School Diploma on it, which is great. In our GED classes, students receive instruction in social studies, language arts, science, and math to prepare the students to complete the four GED tests needed to earn their Illinois High School Diploma. Our students come to our classes with several goals in mind. Our instructors work with each student to help him or her meet their learning goals. It is always exciting to see a student pass the first GED test. This gives the student the confidence to take on the remaining tests needed to complete their diploma and to start the next journey in life. This year, we will be recognizing two GED Students of the Year. Our first GED Student of the Year is Emma Mazarisi. Emma, do you want to come up? I would also like to invite Emma's instructor, Carla Malat, to the front. And um, uh, Carla is going to share with you why she felt Emma was deserving of the Student of the Year honor. Am I loud enough? There we go. Um, thank you all, first of all, for coming. And again, I'm Carla Millat. Emma is a model student. She approaches her work in a very methodical way, is always attentive in class, juggles work, home, studying, is a positive in her approach to learning in life, perseveres, and always goes the extra mile. She's also very kind and caring. I told you she's the model student. Um, I am extremely expressed, impressed with her methodical way that she approaches her work, at least what I see, working on one portion or subject at a time, focusing fully on that subject, and then passing that test and moving on to the next. When she passes that test, she uses that as a boost because she's always kind of nervous that she won't, but she can. Um, Emma is very patient with herself, and she never gives up. Uh, she kind of reminds me of the tortoise and the hare because she may not get to that finish line first, but she will definitely, I'm sorry, fastest, but she will definitely finish first. She's also one of the most gracious students I've ever had the privilege to teach. She's grateful for any opportunity to learn more, tutoring center. Um, we offer websites, iPath, IX, Aztec, IXL, the Kaplan Text, attending ESL classes. Um, she studies vocabulary on her own outside of class in addition to what is assigned. I believe she ordered additional vocabulary texts, <laughs> like the ones we use in our class, to continue to increase her vocabulary. She will not stop until she meets her approval. In class, um, Emma is attentive. She asks questions. She completes all of the work given. She juggles her working hours, spending time with her husband and family. And I wrote too much, but I have to write about Emma. Um, I witnessed her, and this is what's beautiful. We had small groups. Whatever group Emma was in had constant conversation, productive, and in the end, I see her, you know, share your thoughts. What do you think? Da, 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 da. So her group usually ended up being one of the most productive, and it's because she has a way of making people feel comfortable and, and allows them to open up and share. Got to find my spot. Emma traveled back to her home country of Mongolia during spring semester, and while she was there, she even continued to work. <laughs> she um, completed the Constitution modules for the certification, and she shared with me that the internet connection was a little sketchy and labored, but she still went through and, and got it done. <laughs> um, Emma has a very positive attitude. She accept, accepts any challenge put in her path. 
She was an accountant in Mongolia, if I'm correct. But once coming to the United States, we didn't accept, the United States didn't accept her certification. So when I look at all that, and I'm getting teary up, sorry. When I look at all that, and I see the uh, difficulty in that, she didn't let that deter her. She almost used it as an inspiration to inspire her to keep going and, and achieve. She will achieve whatever goals she chooses because she will persevere. She is student of the year because she is methodical, patient, diligent, perseveres, asks questions, completes her work, and more than, has a very positive attitude, gets along very well with others, and she will achieve her goals whatever they may be. Congratulations. Carla's not going to go too far because the second ESL student of the year is also from Carla's class. And this student is January Bolton. January, come on up. Carla, come on up. January has juggled life throughout the semester, this, throughout this year. She entered the fall of this year, quickly building friendships with anybody that sat close to her. <laughs> You're laughing because it's true. Her ability to make people feel comfortable is innate. It's just part of who she is. She and her cohort of friends became regulars in our GED class. She's a very caring individual, which is reflected in her profession as a CNA. She came into our class scoring very, very well on the CASAS test, which is the reading portion of the CASAS test, which is given upon entrance of the GED program, which Sarah explained. January has an abundance of academic ability and logic. However, those scales of justice always tip both ways, right? January is blessed with varying levels of nervousness that seem to kick in when you say the word test. <laughs> I show January scores from the reading portion of the CASAS and explain the reality of how good these scores were. I shared with her how well she was doing with our vocabulary work in class, asking and answering questions, doing all the vocabulary work, writing extended responses that were spot on. I believe January is aware of her ability level, but then there's that word test. And I don't think she's the only one that deals with this, but she really dealt with it well. Um, she made many efforts to overcome this obstacle. Finally, we were having a conversation. I recall telling her to concentrate on those scores on the CASAS test, focus on the score of a practice test, which I recall her taking with a suggestion, well, why don't you just take that today? She scored extre extremely well. Um, we discussed the positive thoughts and how academically sound her ability truly was. She pondered all of this, and she also discovered that she needed a good night's sleep before her tests. So she worked nights and into early mornings, so she adjusted her work schedule on the nights before she scheduled tests. All of those things combined helped her to pass tests. And once she started believing in herself, adjusting her work schedule, she started passing. From February, she's passed three tests and will more, most likely pass the last one by the end of summer school. There's been no stopping this woman, and there won't be any stopping this woman. She deserves students of the year because, student of the year because she overcame her emotions by patiently working through all of that, showing herself that she is capable, confident, 
intelligent, and able to juggle work and school. Uh, congratulations, and I know that whatever you achieve, you will achieve whatever goals you set. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. I just want to um, say thank you to everyone, my, especially my family and um, Sarah, Carla, Ben, Alicia. Everybody pushed me. I, whenever I would throw my insecurities at them, they, everybody was my biggest cheerleader. My class, whoops, my classmates, they kept pushing me. And um, this is, uh, I'm from Iowa. This is my, I moved here two years ago. This is my fourth or fifth time attempting my GED. And I finally am at the end of the, at the end of the goal line. And that's because of you guys, you and Ben, especially, and my family just pushing me along. And so thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is for you. Oh, come on, August. We want you to enroll in classes, OK? OK. Congratulations. Thank everybody. you. <laughs> Congratulations to Emma and to January for all of their hard work this year. Our GED instructors work hard to support our students to help them to gain the confidence and skills necessary to succeed in college and in the workforce. Providing classes to assist students in successfully completing their diploma helps our students get closer to their personal and educational goals. At this time, I would like to introduce our GED instructors. And when I call your name, if you would please stand. Ben Leitner. Ben is not here tonight. Carla Mala. Sherry Dimmig. Jeannie King, who could not be with us tonight. Kathy Jacoby, who could not be with us tonight. And somewhere around here is Alyssa Venema. She's here somewhere. <laughs> These ladies and gentlemen served 108 students this year in our GED preparation classes. At this time, we will recognize students who made a level gain in reading this year. Um, these students have increased their reading level based on their post-test reading scores, or these are students who came into the program already at the highest level. So they came into the program at a 12th grade level, which is very good. I will ask the GED instructors to come to the podium and to present your level gain awards to your students. So students, when you hear your name called, please come to the front to receive your certificate. Come on up, Carla. <laughs> you have student, you don't have a name? Okay, that's great. Okay. The first one I have is Olivia Arts. And I can't take credit for this because she came from the night class, so I think it's more this one. <laughs> Kyle Hudson. <laughs> Victoria Lull. Last but not least, Brianna Wesley. <laughs> and I don't think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay. Congratulations to our level gainers. Good job, everybody. 
All right. At this point in the evening, we would like to recognize our GED graduates or our Illinois High School Diploma graduates. To earn the Illinois High School Diploma, a student must pass the science, math, social studies, and language arts GED tests. They also must complete the state required constitution test requirement. As our students know, this is not an easy task, especially if you're working, caring for a family, and juggling many other responsibilities. Our graduates have shown the highest level of dedication and determination. Tonight, we are very fortunate to have our regional superintendent, Mr. Chris Tennyson, with us to recognize our students who have successfully completed their diplomas this year. The Regional Office of Education oversees the education standards in Lee, Ogle, and Whiteside counties. One of the duties of this office is to certify that a student has met the requirements to earn the Illinois High School Diploma. Upon successful completion of the GED exams, the ROE signs and certifies each diploma. Please welcome Mr. Tennyson to the front. Thank you, Sarah. I always appreciate this coveted spot right before giving out the reason that we're here, the diplomas. We've been here an hour and now I get to, I'm standing in between you and getting your diplomas. Not to worry, I was a high school principal for 12 years, so I've helped run 12 pretty efficient graduations. So I'm gonna make a few short remarks and then we'll get on to the important stuff. I can't tell you how honored I am to be your regional superintendent of schools. Part of my job is I get to oversee and support the 24 great school districts we have in Lee Ogle and Whiteside counties. And another privilege I have is I get to attend a lot of events and speak at a lot of events. And I talk a lot about educational things and I talk a lot about leadership. And I can honestly say, sitting here tonight and listening to the stories, this is probably the most impressive group I've been with this year. I, I, I study leadership and I focus on leadership. And what do you think is one of the major things that sets people apart from being successful and the people that don't reach their goals? Any idea? Any thoughts on that? It's not intelligence. It's not what grades you got in high school or college. There's nothing correlated to that. I'll break it down to you this way. Most studies that I read say most average people spend six to seven hours at work a day. Most average people, they say seven, eight hours of sleep at night. I'd love to get eight hours of sleep at night. I don't know how many of you get that. But if we're generous, that leaves us with roughly between eight and nine hours a day where we're not working and we're not sleeping. And the successful people I talk to, they all, it's the same thing. They do the most with that eight hours. And when I sit here and I listen to these stories tonight, wow, I, I am in awe. All of you have done that with those eight hours. You're here. You've reached your goals because everything that you have on your plate and everything that you've been through, you still found this to be important for you and you're here because it was important to you. And I will tell you, that's what sets you apart. And as you head on to whatever's next, Keep that drive. Go on to your next goal. Figure out what it is and spend that eight hours, that extra eight hours you have every day working towards that, and the sky will be the limit. And some of you, you heard tonight, I just lost two very important people in our GED program. So that means we're going to need teachers. So I would love to have some of you come back and talk to me, and maybe you'd like to teach in our GED program and help people get their Illinois High School Diploma. So thank you. You've motivated me. You've, you've helped me focus on the fact that I need to do more this year with my eight hours, and I promise to do that. Uh, and I can't tell you how honored I am to be here in front of you. The last thing I get to do is very important. I get to tell you for the first time ever that the state of Illinois has certified your Illinois high school diplomas, and they're ready to go. So let's get on with that. Okay, students, when your name is called, please come up and you will receive your certificate. The first graduate we have is Macy Denning.
Macy's doing pretty good. She was scooting around for a while there. She's, she's walking really well now. Our next graduate is James Ennels. I don't think James could be with us tonight. That's okay. Our next graduate is Marissa Ford. Brianna Jackley. Myquana Jones. Emma Mazarisi. <laughs> Emma just completed her last test on Friday, not even a week ago. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our graduates, our Illinois High School Diploma recipients. And as Dr. Helmick and Mr. Tennyson said, we hope you continue on with your education, and we would love to see you here in the summer or fall at Sauk Valley. Our final award of the evening is to announce our students who are receiving the Glenn Sauter Memorial Scholarship. The Glenn Sauter Memorial Scholarship was established in memory of Sauk Valley Community College adult education instructor, Glenn Sauter. This scholarship provides financial assistance to a graduate who plans to continue their education at Sauk Valley Community College. Students are awarded this scholarship, who are awarded this scholarship, have demonstrated the initiative, desire, and commitment to persist in their educational goals. Seeing students achieve success was so important to Glenn. Glenn worked diligently to help his students succeed, not only in school, but also in life. To apply for the scholarship, students must complete the scholarship application and submit an essay answering the question, what is the impact an education can make on your life? Recipients of the Glenn Sauter Memorial Scholarship will be awarded with $500 to use towards their first semester at Sauk Valley Community College. At this time, I would like to recognize and thank Reverend Vicki Sauter, Glenn's wife. Vicki, would you please stand? <laughs> the funds donated by Reverend Sauter not only provide the scholarship assistance, but these funds also cover the students' costs in taking GED tests. The cost to complete GED testing can be as high as $160. But due to the, pro the funding provided by Reverend Sauter in memory of her husband, Glenn, students do not have to pay anything to complete the required testing to earn their diploma. Thank you, Reverend Sauter, for continuing Glenn's legacy of encouraging lifelong learning and removing barriers so our students can reach their educational goals. We are so grateful for your continued support of our program and of our students. Thank you. This year, I am pleased to share that we have three Glenn Sauter Memorial Scholarship recipients. Our first recipient is Macy Denning. Can you make it 
down here, Macy. <laughs> and I, I asked for Macy's permission, and she begrudgingly said yes. <laughs> she had to read it first. I would like to read to you um, Macy's uh, essay. It's up to you. <laughs> so Macy um, graduated in October of last year. Um, Macy is currently in our, or she just finished her first semester at Sauk Valley Community College. And she currently gets to listen to me two days a week in our FYE class and loves it. <laughs> All right. Um, I would like to read to you what Macy wrote. So an impact an education can make on the life of a GED graduate by Macy Denning. Being a GED graduate has impacted my life as I am sure it has many others. I have just recently gradu graduated with my GED October 17th of this year, 2022. It has impacted my life in many ways and continues to impact my life to this day. The opportunities I have in life now are endless. This was my third attempt at getting it, and I finally graduated. I cannot begin to explain the feeling I felt of finally being proud of myself after so long of feeling like a failure. I walk in May of 2023 for my diploma, and I could not be more excited to watch the little family I have made be proud of me as well. I have many reasons why I went after my GED, many of those reasons being my children. I want to be a good role model for my children. I wanted a better life. I no longer wanted to struggle or be part of that cause by not finishing school like I should have. My daughter is now six years old, meaning she is in school full time. I want her to be able to look up to me and think of my mother can do it, so can I. I remember my mother not finishing school and, I, and how I struggled alone at home with homework assignments and such. I wanted to be educated enough to help my daughter and my son for that matter. I just, in the GED program alone, have learned so much and I feel much more confident in myself. Besides the impact it has made on my self-esteem, knowing I will now be able to further help my children with their education, it has also impacted not only me, but my family too, by giving me the chance to further my education by now being able to attend college. I am now enrolled in school and a college student here at Sauk Valley Community College. Another way education has impacted my life is better opportunities in the workforce. I now reach the requirements for many jobs that I did before becoming a GED graduate, which gives me the opportunity to make more money, to give my family a better life, the life they deserve. To be able to know I will not leave this world leaving my children with my own debt, being able to afford a life insurance policy for my family to know that they will be well taken care of after I'm gone, being able to take them on vacation, and being able to put my kids through college. My education, being a GED graduate, has impacted my life in many ways. The list could go on and on. Overall, I regret nothing and wish I had taken this opportunity a lot sooner. We're glad you did it, Macy. And Macy will be continuing at Sauk Valley Community College. Fantastic. Our second um, Glenn Sauter scholarship recipient is Moses Thompson. Moses could not be with us this evening. Um, a little bit about Moses. I think, um, Macy, you might have been our first graduate, actually. And Moses was number two. He was our second graduate. He graduated a little bit after you in November. Um, great student. He also started college classes this semester, so he just finished his first semester at Sauk Valley Community College. And he is also in my FYE class, so he, along with Macy, get to listen to me. Um, I asked for his permission to read his essay, and he said, absolutely. So Moses' essay is titled, Education is Important. I am a firm believer that no matter the age, an individual's education is the most valuable thing they have. Without it, the world as we know it would fall apart. 
Many people think that they are too old or they cannot learn something new. But I have found that although an expert knows their craft, a master is always learning. Getting a GED seems like a step down from a high school diploma. However, it is just as good. A GED should not be treated as second place. It should be seen as a step in the right direction, a starting point for something greater. I certainly see it as such. A GED student may be tempted to stop after getting their GED. And for some, this is all they need. For others, a GED is a gateway to further education. It can boost confidence, prove that you can get the education you seek, and help prepare you for college. In the end, getting an education will allow one to achieve great things and lead to a happy, self-fulfilled life. Having graduated from the adult ed program at SBCC, I feel like I'm ready to continue my education and work to achieve my goals and dreams. I can say with certainty that pursuing my education has led me to not only increased confidence in myself, but determination to learn all I can about anything and everything that interests me. Congratulations, Moses. And he will also be continuing his studies in the fall at SOC. And our last scholarship uh, recipient for this evening is Emma Mazarisi. <laughs> Come on up, Emma. You've been up here a lot tonight. As I mentioned, Emma just finished her GED last Friday, and we couldn't get that scholarship application up to the foundation office fast enough, <laughs> but she got it. <laughs> um, Emma is also completing FYE with me right now, and she will definitely be in classes this fall. Um, Emma has given me permission to share her essay, so I will read to you what Emma wrote. The first time that I heard the word GED was at our family Christmas dinner a few years ago. My brothers-in-law were making jokes about my husband's education. Everybody agreed my husband is the most educated person in our family because he is the only one who has a GED. All of my brothers-in-law are high school dropouts. I didn't understand how a GED could be the most important thing at that time, especially because English is my second language. Having a GED seemed unreachable for me. I told myself, you can get a GED one day just like your husband, why not? Getting a GED will help me improve my English and could open doors to further education. First, I attended ESL classes at Sauk Valley Community College for about two years. I learned how to read, write, and speak in English. After I applied for a GED class, I was working towards earning my GED and learning more about American history, government, and economics. The most important reason why I wanted to obtain my GED was I needed to prove it to myself. Yes, I'm 45 years old, an immigrant woman, but age is nothing. I can learn new things and improve myself. After my GED, I felt confident and desired to learn more. GED classes gave me the motivation for further education. In today's advanced world, education is everything. Because of that, my next goal is to get an associate's degree in accounting at Sauk Valley Community College. With a GED and a college education, I could get a less physically demanding job at my age and spend more time with my son. Also, I will be the most educated person in my family. They will be proud of me and joke about my education being higher than my husband's at our family Christmas dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Earning my GED was a proud moment for me too and I was filled with a great sense of happiness and accomplishment. Well said Emma, thank you. Congratulations to these students, and I'm so happy that I know I'll be continue to see you, though you won't be in our program. I hope you'll still come and stop by and say hi. Let us know how your classes are going. We are so proud of you. Well, we have reached the end. Yeah, we went over an hour. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to the students for coming, and thank you to the family members and the friends 
for supporting your student this year. You, the students, as you do every day, you inspire us. You inspire us each and every day. And you are why we do what we do. You are why we love our jobs. Before you leave, please stop by the table out in the Dillon Mall. And we have a treat for you to take home with you as a thank you for coming. Students and instructors, so all of the students that are still here and all of the teachers, if you would please come forward, we would love to get um, a photo. So please come up. Thank you so much once again for attending and please have a wonderful night.